Hi there. Hi. I'm just getting on to just be on here, so I'm going to mute myself and stuff for a little bit because we got a little while before we'll start. So see you in a minute.
Oh, no, don't record. Hi, guys. Um, everybody's just every, a lot of people are on, but I think we have a couple more people coming even. So I'm going to wait just um, probably about three more minutes before we start. So just get comfy.
Okay, well, the alarm bell is telling me that it is five o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome. Look at everybody. This is awesome. Um, I This is orientation for the evening, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., Monday through Thursday students, and for the weekend students, okay? So, um, if you're on here, you're probably part of that crowd. There might be someone on here who missed one earlier today, and if so, then don't listen to the part where I'm talking specifically about the evenings and the weekends, okay? So um, I think all of you know me, I'm Larry. I'm Larry Labello. I'm one of the directors of the CNA program at ICC. And then um, Jessica Blackmore is on here too. Um, Jessica, she's waving. Hello, Jessica. Uh, she is, um, the co-director of the program. So together, um, we coordinate everything that you need to know for the program. She focuses mostly on the faculty end of things, and I tend to focus a little bit more on the student end of things. But this time of year, when we're getting ready for um, school to start, we work together on an awful lot of everything. So um, first thing I would like to ask you to do is go ahead and put your name in the chat box okay so if you um, have never been on zoom usually there's a menu kind of towards the bottom of your screen and you'll see a little thing uh, that says chat and so just go ahead and type your name in there and then that way we will know who's on here and everything um, and Let's see, what else? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen. Questions, if you have questions, you can raise oh, your hand. Thank you, Jess. Um, or there is a there is an option at the bottom um, that if you go to, it's called reactions. And if you click on that, it has a hand clap, but I call it like raising your hand. And then there is a thumbs up. Uh, so if you guys can go ahead and try to use that. Some people do have the option on their phone too, which surprises me. Uh, so if you want to use that, yay, I can yay. see them. So yeah, just find a little reaction. So if you have a question, you Perfect. can type your question into the chat box. You can unmute yourself and interrupt at any time, or you can raise your hand using the little clapping hands symbol, and um, we'll know that you have something that you want to uh, to ask us. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and then um, uh, I won't be able to see you as much, but Jess will still be able to see. So, okie dokie. Oh, well, here we are. Um, there we go. And And we'll just go ahead and start. Okay, so welcome to orientation. We always have orientation a couple weeks before school starts so that you can get excited about the program and so that you can know what you need to know to be successful. Um, so we're gonna talk about kind of some stuff that we've already talked about and then some new stuff that maybe we haven't talked about yet. So um, strap yourselves in, we're gonna have fun. Uh, okay, so contact information. Um, this was in the registration PowerPoint as well. And so we like to throw it in again, just so you remember that you have three people that you can contact if you have questions about the program. Um, I know that all of you have my email because I have been stalking you, most of you all summer. Um, and then you'll get emails from me all the time. So um, hopefully all of you are getting into your ICC email and we're going to be able to um, talk to you exclusively via ICC um, email from now on. Um, and so I keep you know, telling you call the help desk, get into that because it's gonna be really helpful in the program, especially this semester, if you get into that ICC email, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. Um, remember that Stevie is a good um, contact person. If you have questions, 
Um, she's usually by the phone, uh, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30. So if you have a quick question, you want a phone call, she's your best phone call option. I am going to go ahead and play for you our video. Um, this is a video that we made about six years ago um, with some students who were in the program at the time. And um, it will give you a little bit of an idea about um, maybe what it's going to be like uh, to be in the program. So let me get that. There we go. Oh, look at me remembering, Jessica. I'm teachable. Yay. We just got a glitch in the system and happened. The nursing assistant program at ICC is unique. The community served by ICC is huge. Therefore, we serve a very diverse population of students. It's my job to make sure that every student has a chance to be successful. It can be stressful trying to serve the needs of every student, but even on my worst day, I wouldn't trade this job for anything. The best feeling in the world is to see a student succeed, especially when they outshine their own expectations. There are a lot of skills that make a good CNA. Um, I would say on the top of the important skills is listening skills. Um, you're going to learn most about your patient by listening to what they're saying. And sometimes it starts off as a story and it'll lead into physical or emotional difficulties that they've been having. So to me, listening is number one out of all the skills that we do. I think um, empathy, I think caring and making the, make, being able to make a connection with the person. Because I think if they, especially in long-term long -term care, if they feel comfortable with you, I feel that they're gonna um, be more likely to you know, want to have their bath and want to do these, all the different things they have to do in a day more easily. Being, you know, again, reliable, on time, caring for your patient, not doing it because you have to, doing it because you want to, and just trying to make their uh, experience, in, whether it's a nursing home or a hospital, making it better for them. It has to be someone who cares. You cannot do this job if you don't personally care. This is, um, in the medical field, it's not so much about the medicine the CNA is about the personal care that you give, the time that it takes. You're the one that comes in to make them feel better and report medical things to the nurse, but you're the most, you're the one there for personal care. Listening, you know, being caring, you know, is, I feel like it has to be genuine, not just something, just to do it just because. But if you, you know, person that, that likes to help the next person and be a good like a role model. You know, I've found a lot of it depends on tone of voice, touch, and approach. Um, that's why I get along so well with my Alzheimer's patients. It really is, imagine you're in bed and you're in pain and you're tired and uncomfortable. And some lady comes in, flips the light on and says, it's time to get up now. That's a rude awakening. You know, you're tired, you're cold, you're possibly wet if you're incontinent. Now imagine somebody comes in, leans down, strokes your hair, doesn't turn the light on yet and says, good morning, we're gonna get up and go eat breakfast. I'm gonna turn the light on now. That's gonna make a difference on how your patient reacts to you. So I try to put myself in their position. Would I want somebody to approach me with a loud, um, rude, condescending voice? or do I want them to approach me with a kind, soft touch and a hug? It just makes a difference. The hugs, the kisses, reminding them that they are loved will make a difference on how you get your cares done. It is very important to be in class. If you miss one day, you miss a lot. But it, it's not too much that you can't do. Like I said, I'm a mother of four. I still get it done. I still get the laundry done. Um, the most we've had is four or five chapters at a time. But if you just read it and you go along in class and pay attention, the questions are pretty right in the book. They're self-explanatory. 
it's not too challenging to find the answers if you can read the book and the test. It seems like if you take the end of the chapter test, the test that the teacher gives is pretty much right on with what you learn. There's no big surprises. Oh, yeah, it's, it's really important because Miss Phyllis starts at 8 and goes till 2. And almost everything she says is either going to be on the test or something you need to know. So, and you can't miss or, or your grade goes down. So. If you don't come across her day, you're missing a lot because we do so much in lab and we go over a lot in lecture. And plus she teaches us stuff outside of the book and gives us like experiences. So it's really important if you attend class every day. You miss out on a lot of information. It's important because you need everything pretty much. And if you're not here, then you don't get it. And you never know what you're gonna miss out on. So I just, I try to be here every day so I can get all the information I can. The program is really fast paced but you can keep up with it. I like the fact that you learn new things every day. Every time you come into class, it's a fun environment and you're always meeting new friends and it's very um, interactive. The students act with each other quite often on lab days and everything, so you meet friends very fast. Um, it really teaches you responsibility and to make sure that you're honest. Like if you make a mistake, let the nurse know. And if you're not sure, don't be afraid to like ask questions that when you get a job, you need to be on time because other people there depend on you. The people that are getting off shift want to go home just as much as you'd want to go home at yours. So you need to be there to relieve them. You need to be on time and early enough to get report and make sure that you have enough time in case something comes up, in case there's a snowstorm, in case you get a flat tire. Leave early enough, know your route, how to get there. Uh, it's close to home and with work, it's very flexible, uh, very capable of succeeding with and a kid and working. What I love is it's convenient. You can go day, you can go night. Um, the, the teachers are amazing. I'm learning what I need to learn and I feel like they're very competent and I'm, like I said, I'm learning what I need to know. I love taking care of people and making sure that their needs are met and plus I took care of my grandma when she was really sick that you can come in and report the little things. You can see if somebody's having a bad day and go back and tell the nurse, hey, I don't know if Mrs. Jones is getting depressed, or you can just pay more one-on-one -on -one attention to the patient or resident. Because I think we're a big part of the health team. I mean, we do a lot. We have a major role in the whole health career, health thing, everything. So I just, I think we're important because we're always handy. It's, it's, you always need, always in need of something everywhere. You've seen just a few testimonials on what makes a good CNA. I encourage you to strive for excellence in all you do in the program. Remember, your focus and dedication will lead to your success. CNAs are in demand in our community. There are jobs waiting for certified candidates. Now let's go get them. So hopefully what you got out of the video is that it's really important to be in class um, and that there's a lot of homework and a lot of tests in this program. So that is all true. Um, and so just remember that um, to make this a priority and you will have a really good time, you will meet a lot of nice people and you will love the program if you are there every day and doing all of the work. If you're not, then you're probably going to think that it's horrible because it will be hard for you if you're not always there and you miss um, some of the content. So um, at orientation, I always like to talk a little bit about compliance. I have heard um, from most of you with, you know, fingerprinting, drug screens, I'm getting um, shot records, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so uh, keep sending it. And um, just know that when the flu shot comes out in September, we will be sending out a reminder um, to all of you that you need to get that because all of our clinical um, sites require it. Um, and then you will keep receiving emails from me on a regular basis. So remember, if you never get an email from me, you should be suspicious. 
um, because I do email students a lot. So um, just keep watching for those emails and, and those updates. And hopefully um, soon you'll all be in compliance and we won't have anything to worry about. Clinical starts in mid-October, so our goal date to have everything done is definitely before October. So. Um, the program. Uh, we like to just kind of revisit um, the program so that there's no surprises. Um, hey, Jessica? Yep. Um, are you there? So yeah. would you be able to talk for just a minute so that I can flip over and give the link to one of our students who's trying to get on? Yeah, let me get the let right me, screen up. I'll just, ad I can just advance this slide. If you can just talk about like the three classes. It'll only take me a second. Yeah, no, you're fine. Okay, okay. I'll mute myself. Okay, so uh, for when you came to registration, uh, we um, talked, or Larry mainly, talked about the three courses that are involved um, that are all on your schedule. So the first is Health 112, five credit hours. So lecture is entirely online. Your lab is in person and it's scheduled. Uh, and then your clinical will be on site. Um, and so we don't necessarily have the locations yet. We have tentative locations, but as you know, with COVID, we uh, can't necessarily always plan for things because if a nursing home ends up having cases, they will close to anyone that is not essential uh, and they do not consider students essential in the nursing homes. So that's where it comes in with your clinicals uh, that we sure. will keep you posted as well as we can. I know she's, no, she's, <laughs> she's going to get it pulled back up. I think, did you stop sharing? Uh, so that's what the clinical is. So then you have Health 116, which is the Alzheimer's component of our class. That's a one credit hour class and on your schedules, it is set entirely online for, um, it's, di it's different, a little bit different for the weekends and the evening, or evening, yes. It's generally one week of class. I love watching Larry try to figure these things out. Um, it's generally one week Stop. without Health 112. So it's something that you can put, you dedicate all of your time to Health 116, to the Alzheimer's portion. Uh, so you will get online, you will do discussion boards, you will complete the activities, the homework, the workbook, um, and take the tests. And do you have any, it's a little different for, it's not necessarily an entire week, is it for the weekend? Isn't it like Sunday to Friday? I don't remember. Uh, for what? For the... Health 116 for a week. Oh yeah, it's, it's a little they still have a they still have a week block. I'm back. I'm back. Sure. I, I okay. So um, yeah, so you'll have basically you'll have a week blocked off of Health 112 where you will not have um, any classes that weekend um, for the weekend class, and then for the evening class you will not have any classes for an entire week with Health 112. So you won't have to come to campus at all that week. But during that week, that's when you focus on finishing the Alzheimer's class online. So you can watch the um, videos, you can participate in um, the PowerPoints, you can do the quizzes, you can do the project, everything you do online, you do it kind of um, on your own time over that entire week. Um, so the goal is to get through that one credit hour class in one week, and then come back and you're ready to go back to your regularly scheduled classes. Thanks, Jessica, for doing that. Um, so then after, um, after Alzheimer's, I usually talk about um, CPR. CPR is a requirement for CNAs in the state of Illinois. So um, some of you, there are a few of you who already have CPR and you've already sent me your CPR card and we have dropped you from Health 041 and that's great. Um, but most of you need the CPR class. And so normally CPR is um, on a Friday night um, for most of you and it's six hours long. You have lecture and um, the practicum where you actually get checked off on your skills. But because of the COVID situation, 
we are using the American Heart Association online CPR course. And then we're, after you have completed that, we are having you come in on your CPR date to get checked off on your CPR skills with an instructor. And so there will be a very detailed um, explanation of what you're supposed to expect for CPR, and that will be coming out to you, so watch that. It will come to your ICC email, and it will be a link um, for how to get into the American Heart Association site. The book is included with that, so you do not have to buy a book. Usually you have to buy a CPR book, but um, for this semester, because of this special circumstance, the book is included. So um, once you're into that site, you'll have access to all the information that you need. Um, and then, but you will have to come on to campus on your CPR date and get checked off with a CPR instructor on your skills. They just don't want you there that entire six hour block of time for both the lecture and the lab portion of that. So they're sort of cutting it in half. Um, so, like I said, there will be more information coming out on that um, very soon, so be watching for that. Attendance. Um, we set an orientation or a registration that attendance is the number one indicator of success in the CNA program, and that is very true. So, please make this a priority. Tell your family and your friends that you are going to be a little bit busier than usual. Um, with studying and um, getting everything done that you need to do for this program. So um, attendance will be taken, whether you're online, in the lab, or in the clinical, we are always taking attendance. So if you are in the evening class and you're supposed to be in lecture online, your instructor will be taking attendance online and will be expecting you to be participating throughout that lecture in order to get credit for being there. So it is very, very important, not to punish you, but because we know that if you do not um, participate and take part and be a part of this class, you will not get what you need from this program. And we want you to get what you need from the program. So if you miss too much class um, or too much lab or too much clinical, then you will have to drop from the program. That is a state law. Um, the Illinois Department of Public Health actually says that we have to be able to prove that you have enough hours in class to sit for the state exam. So if you've missed too many hours, we have to ask you to drop from the program. Um, if you miss any class at all or any lab at all or any clinical at all, then you will be behind. Um, so just um, make it to class, be on time, make the most of it. You're paying for your classes. So just get your money's worth out of being in this program. The lab. I like to talk a little bit about the lab. The lab is a very special part of being in any health careers program. In the lab, um, you get a chance to make mistakes, to practice things that you've never done before, or some things that you've done before but maybe weren't doing quite right. Um, you get to ask questions, you get to take your time. So make the most of your lab experience. Um, one of the things that I will encourage you to do is to dress comfortably for lab. When you come to lab, you will be moving around, lifting things, moving people. Um, and so don't wear things that are super tight, that you can't move in, that you're all dressed up. Um, the best things to wear are either scrubs or like leggings or maybe like basketball shorts, just something comfortable um, but conservative, just so that you can move around and be comfortable in the lab setting. Um, we encourage you to cut your fingernails. We like short fingernails in the lab because long fingernails do not go well with gloves. Um, and we also encourage you to leave your excessive jewelry at home. Um, when you come into lab, you should be ready to kind of do the skills. And when you're doing skills, you don't want to have on big, uh, a lot of jewelry that could get stuck on something and, and hurt you or hurt someone else. Um, also, when you're coming into the lab this semester in particular, um, you're going to want to bring your workbook to the lab. Um, the workbooks will actually be graded while you are in the lab setting. Your instructor will um, be giving you um, workbook assignments to go along with every single lecture that you have and then that workbook will be graded when you're actually in the lab given back to you and then you'll go and do your next assignment 
Um, oh, we've got questions. Who's got questions? Let's see. I can't see. Um, I don't. I don't see any. Are they coming maybe directly to you? I don't know. I just said three participants raised their hand. Okay. Well, we'll go oh. on, and if they if there's questions, we'll we'll catch up with them. Um, be on time for the lab and use the time that you have in the lab to its fullest extent. So when you are there, your time is precious. Um, we don't know how long we're going to be able to stay in the lab this semester. We could have a huge um, outbreak of COVID and get kicked out of going to campus at any time. So while you are there, make the very most of every single minute. Practice um, your skills. Don't do something once and think that you have it down. Um, do things more than once. Become an expert as opposed to someone who's just practiced something one time. Um, the COVID rules for lab, these are a little bit special just because of this semester. Um, the campus is allowing us to use the labs, but we have been asked to wear a mask as we are entering and exiting the building and while we are in the building um, around other people. So unless you are completely alone, which probably won't happen, you will need to have your mask on while you're in the lab. Um, they've asked us not to congregate in the halls or anywhere in the building. In fact, they've removed all of the furniture from the hallways of the buildings at ICC. So there's no um, tendency for students to want to kind of lounge around and do all the cool college stuff that everybody wants to do. Um, that's just not going to be allowed. You come in, go directly to the lab. Um, all of the chairs in the lab have wheels on them. And so um, I recommend that you come in. You find yourself a chair, wheel it away from the table um, so that you are about six feet away from anybody that will be around you. Listen to what the instructors have to say for what you're gonna be doing that day. And then when you actually do your um, skills, you will be assigned a, de um, a dedicated lab partner. And that partner will be the person that you work with in the lab for the most part. So that if anyone does come down with COVID, if anything does happen um, in our class, then we will be able to say like, oh, well, Latasha and Tracy were, um, friend, were lab partners. So if Tracy came down with COVID, we better make sure that Latasha knows for sure because they've been in each other's face practicing lab skills. So that could happen, right? So it's a little bit easier to trace that way. Um, if you bring anything into lab um, to drink, it needs to be covered um, and it preferably should be in a disposable container. So like a disposable water bottle, a disposable soda bottle, whatever, needs to have a lid and it needs to be something that you can throw away before you leave the lab. Um, and no food will be allowed in lab. Our longest labs are three hours, so you should plan to eat before you come or plan to eat as soon as you leave the lab. But you're not there long enough for us to have a lunch break or anything like that. So that will also limit our exposure to each other if we just don't um, have any snacks or any food in the lab. Don't bring anything that you don't need for lab. So of course you're gonna to wanna to bring your workbook and maybe um, you know a covered drink. But other than that, you shouldn't have to bring a whole lot with you um, to the lab. So if you bring it in any type of a bag or anything like that, try to make sure that it's something that you can wipe off or wash frequently, just because we don't want to bring in things from home into the lab, and we also don't want to bring things from the lab back to your home. So we're trying as much as we can to prevent um, having any outbreaks of COVID. Um, social distancing will be practiced while we're in the lab as much as possible. We understand that when you're practicing skills, it is almost impossible to stay six feet from someone when you're providing care. And so we'll be wearing masks and we'll be as safe as we can. We'll be washing our hands. Um, and we know that we need to actually like touch each other. Um, but we're going to limit that in between um, close contact as much as we can. Um, we're asking that you do not sit on or touch the beds unless you have permission. Um, and that's because our labs are really, really big and they have um, 10 beds in each lab. Um, and so it's really tempting to walk in and you know, kind of like sit on the bed and talk to your friend or whatever. But anytime we do that, 
we have to strip that bed and send that linen to our linen service. And that's very expensive. And then housekeeping has to come in and sterilize that bed before we can make it again. And so it becomes very expensive for us to, um, to do that. And so we're asking that we just don't use the beds unless they're being used to practice a skill. Um, clinical. So the rules for lab are a little steep, but the rules for clinical are even steeper um, because in clinical, you're out in the community representing not only yourself, but also ICC. Um, and you're taking care of real people who are compromised, who are sick, um, and who need to make sure that we keep them safe. Um, so for clinical, you will need to have seal blue scrubs. The girls in this picture have seal blue scrubs on. Um, seal blue scrubs are available anywhere in the community that sells scrubs. Um, even the dollar store has seal blue scrubs, Walmart, everywhere that sells them. Um, also the ICC bookstores sell seal blue scrubs. If you wanna buy them there, you're, you're welcome to. Um, you should be on time for clinical and ready to go. So those of you who have evening clinical, you should be there at 10 till six and ready to go. Um, and those of you who have weekend clinicals, you will be there at 10 minutes till seven in the morning, ready to go. That's when pre-conference starts and that's the most important part of your day because that's when you make an attack plan for how you're going to take care of everybody. Um, no nail polish is allowed at all. No artificial nails, no long nails, nothing in um, the clinical setting. And so if you have artificial nails, um, that's okay for while you're in lab, as long as they're not excessively long. But artificial nails are not allowed in the clinical setting because they are known to harbor bacteria. Um, you can wear jewelry in the way, in the, only in the way of one post earring per ear and a wedding ring if you're married. Um, even the wedding ring, a lot of nurses opt not to wear the wedding ring when they are working because it tends to catch on the gloves um, and cause a hole in the gloves, which can be um, dangerous for you and your patients. We do not allow any mesh or cloth shoes in the clinical setting. You will need leather or vinyl shoes White is preferable, but if you can't find white, it's very important that your shoes are either leather or vinyl so that you can wipe them off. Um, mesh or cloth or any shoes with holes in them um, are not allowed because you could have um, blood or urine or anything gross um, so right through your shoe and onto your foot. Hang on, I gotta get my dog. Come here. She just doesn't understand that I'm in four orientations today. <laughs> so there we go. Um, if you have long hair, it needs to be pulled back away from your face um, and out of the way of anything that you might be doing. If you have short hair, then you're all set. The COVID stuff that has to do um, with clinical is that you must have your own mask to wear into the facility and out of the facility. Um, and then when you are actually on the clinical floor taking care of patients, you will be given a mask to wear during your shift as a student. So you don't want to wear um, your own mask when you're caring for patients. And you also don't want to wear the mask that you wore all day home and out of the building. So um, you'll be given a mask when you arrive and then you'll get rid of that mask when you leave and you'll wear your mask out of the building. Um, and that's just how we did it over the summer. It worked really well for our spring students who finished up their clinical over the summer. Um, students will not be assigned to care for patients who are in isolation because it is um, very expensive for our clinical sites to provide the PPE that it takes to care for a patient in isolation. And so um, we try to limit the number of people that are in and out of those isolation rooms. Um, because it takes a lot more PPE to care for those, those particular patients. So you will not be asked to go into an isolation room while you're in clinical. Um, be flexible. As Jess was saying, um, we, we hope that we can go to our usual clinical sites this fall, but we don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does. And so if at the last minute a place 
um, restricts visitors and restricts students, then we might have to um, make a choice to, um, to just go ahead and send you somewhere else. So we need to be very flexible. Latasha, did you have a question? Oops, I'm trying to unmute you here. Oops, hang on, I, we can't hear you because you're muted. There we go, okay, now talk. I have a question. I was just trying out the little um, hand that you told me. That's why I was waving. Oh, okay, okay, perfect. Well, hello. <laughs> it's good, it's good uh, talking to you in person. Uh, okay, so um, so anyway, we will, um, even at lunchtime, we're going to ask students to sit six feet away from each other. Um, this past um, clinical group that we had, they were practicing social distancing even at lunch. And when one of the students came up COVID positive from another source, none of the other students in her clinical group um, tested positive. And that's because they were considered low risk. They had their masks on during conference, they had their masks on during patient care, and they, they social distanced when they were eating. And so we're gonna continue to practice those um, safeguards just so that we make sure we keep all of you healthy so that you can finish the program and get, um, get towards meeting your goals. Homework. There is stuff to be done before the first day of school, and that means that you need to get your books. So I'm gonna hold up a copy of the new textbook that we're using. Um, this is what it looks like, and it has a peacock on the front, okay? So when you go to buy your books, if you see a, um, your book and it has a peacock, they have given you the right book in the bookstore, okay? That's what the book looks like. And then the workbook actually looks just like that, except it's all purple and still has the peacock. Okay, so we do use um, the textbook and the workbook. Sorry. Here, there you go. Um, and so you will need to get those um, soon because you will have homework assignment um, and it will be coming to your email sometime um, tomorrow. You will get a list of the reading assignments and the workbook assignments and you will want to do the reading assignment and the workbook assignment for module one, okay? So um, I will send those to your email, you'll have them. They'll also be available on the Blackboard site. You can look that up. Once your Blackboard site opens up, you'll be able to have access to that all semester. But we'd like for you to get started on that ahead of time so that on the first day when your instructor talks about um, the information in module one, it's not the first time you've ever heard it. You will have read it, you'll have done the workbook, and it'll be very familiar to you, and you'll do great on that first test. Um, we will also send you instructions on how to access the student handbook online, and we would ask you to read the first 18 pages of the handbook, um, which are all of kind of like the guidelines that, um, that we follow um, to monitor this program. It talks about like attendance policies and clinical um, dress code. And also we want you to pay special attention to the part about cell phones, smartwatches, and social media, um, because those are all sort of the things with our new generation of students that tend to get students into trouble. Um, so please read um, the handbook on those particular things in, gen in, in specifically. Um, the, as far as social media goes, um, pay attention to the part where it says like it's not okay to talk about um, residents or their families or patients and their families um, in any way on any social media, even if you're not mentioning names. Um, you can actually lose your ability to work in healthcare if you violate HIPAA. So it's a federal law, it's not our rule, um, but it is a federal law. And if you violate that, they take it very seriously. So we don't want anybody to get into any trouble with anything like that. So read the handbook carefully and you will be asked to sign a paper that says you read the handbook on the first day of class. After the semester is over, when you have passed everything and you've successfully completed your clinical and you're all done, um, then you will be eligible to sign up to take your state exam. The sign up is done completely online um, and you have up to a year to take that exam. Most students wanna take it immediately. 
So when you finish, you'll, you'll be um, given all the information on how to sign up for that. You'll be able to sign up to take it whenever and wherever you wish, anywhere in the state that offers it. Um, you will have up to three opportunities to pass your state exam. Right now, we have a 95% pass rate in this program, which is excellent. Um, so if you pay attention, um, you do what you're supposed to do, there's an excellent chance that you will pass your state exam on the first attempt, which we hope you all do. Um, if for some reason you don't, you get three tries to pass it. If you don't pass it in three tries, you would have to repeat the program in order to, um, in order to take the exam again. Um, the cost is $75. You can choose to take it either on paper or on computer. Um, and when you sign up, they give you the option to pick how you would like to take it. Um, there will be a free online review course for the state exam. Um, we offered that to the spring students and it went over very well. And so we will be offering that again. And there will be sign up sheet going out for that. Uh, probably with about that uh, one of the newsletters that I send out. So just kind of watch for that. You're all going to want to um, attend a review course before you take your state exam because it's easy to forget some things that you need to know. Um, I will also be sending out um, job um, opportunities to you. I send them out as soon as I get them. And so after you complete the program, especially, you'll still get emails from me and that'll be like, oh, hey, Unity Point is hiring right now, or hey, this nursing home is really wanting CNAs, they're offering a hiring bonus or whatever. Um, and so whatever I get, I will send out to you. You can either delete it or you can go apply for the job if you're looking for one. Um, we usually have a job fair, but we're not able to do that right now. So sending out job um, opportunities to you is the best I can do right now. Um, you will receive a certificate of completion from ICC when you finish this program. It will come from the graduation office and it will be really nice. You can put it in a frame um, or you can just save it in your portfolio or in a file or wherever you want to put it. It will not be what proves you are certified to work in the state, however, um, because it shows that you finished the program but not that you passed your state exam. So when you pass your state exam, you will not get a certificate from the state of Illinois. You will appear on the healthcare worker registry as eligible to work. And that will be, um, there's a little part called competency at the bottom, and it will show that you have passed your state exam. And that's what employers are, are looking for. So I will send out the instructions on how to print that page. Once you're all taking your exam, I'll get all that out to you so that you can print that and you'll have it. Um, to take with you to a job interview. And on my part, does anyone have any questions? I'm going to stop sharing here. Um, does anyone have questions before I hand the stage over to Ms. Jessica, who's going to cover the hard stuff? Anything? Nope. <laughs> no? Okay. Oh, when can we get our books? I see. Okay. Um, I'll hold the book up again. Somebody couldn't see it. Okay. The book has a peacock on the front. Can you see it? Okay. Um, it's about that thick, not terrible thick, but we do go through about the whole thing in about nine weeks. So that's a lot. Um, the books are available right now at the East Peoria bookstore. The Peoria bookstore is open. But if you want to get your books there, you need to order your books online and you can pick them up at the Peoria store. But you can't just come in and buy books. I don't know why they're doing it like that, but that's how they're doing it. Um, you can also order your books online and ask that they are shipped to your house. Um, they probably charge you for shipping. I don't know. But um, you can do that. Uh, you can buy your patches and your uniforms, um, all of that in the bookstore if you want to, but you do not have to buy your uniforms there. You can buy your uniforms wherever you want to buy your uniforms, Walmart, dollar store, uh, uniform store, online, wherever, as long as they're seal blue. You won't need those until you go to clinical. Um, Okay, can you order books off Amazon? Yes, you can. And once I send you, um, when I send you the supply list for the program, it will have the edition and the publisher and all that on there. So you'll have what you need to order those books on Amazon and you're welcome to do that. 
Um, sometimes you can save a little bit. Um, the, the patches are sold um, at the bookstore. And yes, you have to have one because it goes on the left sleeve of your uniform. Um, and so they are usually about $3, a little less than $3, I think. Um, so anything else? Any other questions? Okay. Um, do you How feel like we're at a good spot, Jess? I think somebody else has a question. Cody, was that you? Yeah, how, how's facial hair? Um, it's fine with me. I think you look really nice, Cody. Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> um, for the most, most of our um, clinical sites are okay with facial hair as long as it's not like the ZZ Top uh, beard um, hanging down. Um, and so what I would do is as it gets a little bit closer and you kind of find out where you're going, if you have specific questions, we can look into it for you and talk to your clinical instructor and stuff. But as long as it's trimmed and nice, see Joe up there. I don't know if you can see Joe Cook on the screen. He's one of our instructors and he has facial hair. Okay, so. I've, I've got mm -hmm. something to add to that. So okay. we don't because we're not uh, we're not going into isolation rooms, especially not isolation rooms that require a respirator or an N95 mask. But when you get employed. Uh, and you have to wear one of those, then they will, you won't be allowed a beard on the sides or even on the chin. They allow a mustache, but not the, even the sides because you have to have a tight seal up against your face in order for air not to get in. Okay. Uh, so in the program, we're okay with that because we're not wearing those N95 masks or those respirators. Uh, but when you have to wear those, uh, they, they will be really uh, picky about your facial hair. Thank you. Huh? All right. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Um, okay, so Jessica, I'm going to hand the, um, the floor the over to you. Yes, Heather, you can attach them however you want. They can, you can use glue or you could just do a couple of stitches so it stays on and just take it off. Absolutely. Uh, so before I get into my part, we are going to take a five minute break, get up, move around, go to the bathroom, get a drink, get a snack. This is very important when you are doing online learning uh, is to still get up and move around. Uh, so we are going to take a five minute break. So we will be back. It'll actually be a couple more minutes. We'll do 555 and then we will cover the online portion in Blackboard. So we will see you shortly. You can just you stay muted and you can turn your camera off and then once you pop back on you can turn your camera back on
All right, everybody. Oh, here goes my dog. It's like clockwork. Anytime one of us has a speaker, dogs have to be insane. All right. So 
we're ready for the second half. So my portion covers a little bit more about being online as an online student. It's not at all what we had anticipated for you. It's not what we want, but it's what we've got. So we've got to approach it uh, as positively and with as much information as we can so that you guys are all uh, successful and we can keep moving forward as a team. Uh, so the first thing is that on ICC's website, they have a section for online learning. And part of that is the online students' rights and responsibilities. So uh, this is going to be on one of the resource sheets that Larry emails you by noon tomorrow. Uh, so just briefly, um, it covers a lot of different things, technical and academic skills, so to make sure that you know how to access your items on a technical level on the computer. Do you have access to a computer, the internet? Do you have your textbooks? Can you log in? Are you participating? Uh, do you have, uh, do you know about tutoring and all of those things? So uh, let me get back to our PowerPoint. That's just a quick show of what that includes. However, this is the most important part is the must have. So you must have a computer with, um, and internet connection. Hold on, my kids are just getting home and I have to kick them out of the room. Hold on. You guys gotta go. No, I will get you in a minute. Go. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry guys, they've been gone all day. Um, so you might, I'm, you might see them back there. Who knows? It, it's a madhouse. Uh, so uh, the computer uh, mainly comes down to Blackboard is the portion that you have to have a good computer for, computer or laptop. We do not recommend using tablets and or your phone, especially not for your online lecture component and or when you're testing. You do need a stable internet connection. Now, if something happens, um, Larry has to deal with my horrible internet all the time. And I'm not, I'm in the middle of a decent sized city. So it doesn't make sense to, for it to act up. So then you need to make sure that you have uh, transportation to and from campus and to and from your clinical site. And <laughs> Here's, this is my youngest, this is Aubrey. Um, and so then you also need to make sure that you are checking your ICC email. Uh, it, you, you're, I'm sure you are tired of us saying that. Um, so I hope you've caught on that it's very important. Uh, so next up, if it'll go on, is what's called netiquette. And it's a real thing for how to uh, compose yourself for online learning or online work or business meetings. Uh, so these are just a couple of, I like really simple, concise items. And so we found these online. So the two platforms that we might use are Google Meets and Zoom. And so with those, uh, your instru it's instructor preference, and they will let you know what those, which one they're gonna pick on Blackboard. So you will get access to Blackboard next week. Typically it doesn't open until your first day of class, uh, but we are gonna get you access a little bit early so that you can get in, look around, and ask questions before day one hits. Uh, so the most important parts, again, I just pull some, some details out, is uh, right now I'm gonna ask all of our students that are on here to turn on your cameras, please. The next, and most of you have already done it and or have kind of been in and out and that's, that's fine. Um, but we want to be able to see you. And the other important part, oh, somebody is walking outside. I am jealous of you. It doesn't say your name, but I see you smiling. You know who you are. Walking outside. We've been inside all day. Um, so the other part is that you want to be muted when you join, because, mainly because just a background noise. Uh, I. They, we've had trains, there were just sirens, so that's why my dog was barking, all of these random things happening in the background. So you just wanna make sure that you're muted uh, and you wanna make sure that you're alone and no distractions uh, because it's very hard to focus and to pay attention when there are others in the room with you. 
it's even hard with my dogs. Um, so there's plenty of times that I lock my dogs out of the room because it, I just can't handle them going back and forth and all over the place. Uh, so you also um, note, so uh, with no distractions. So if you are, if you have to go somewhere or if you use internet at somewhere else, of course, sometimes there might be people walking in the background and that's, that's okay. That's not the concern. It's just that it needs to be something that you're able to focus with. Um, and you're, we can see you, that you're paying attention and that's what we want. So you need to be on time, which for us is early. So as today, if you were on early, you were in here before us. So there is something that's called uh, the waiting rooms on Zoom. And then Google, uh, you can typically just join the meeting early and you, you're just in there and your instructor might not be in there yet. And that's okay. Uh, then the most important thing is the participation. So as we went through with the reactions and raising your hands, um, and as you can see, we're, we are still learning how to operate those things as well. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, so we were working through that, but you know, raising your hand, um, chatting in the chat box are all parts of participation. There are some features. Um, Joe is really good with tech. So Joe, um, in Zoom, there's an option to do, I think, a poll, is that what, or survey? I don't know what the Zoom term is for it, but poll. So it's built right on in. So he has that built in to where it pops up and then you interact in the poll. So that's the participation that matters. So, and Larry has talked about this. You are, go, you are going to be taking care of people and their lives. They are going to be vulnerable, sick, accidents, illnesses. Uh, and so we want to make sure that our students that we are sending into these clinical facilities are the best possible students that they can have. And to ensure that we're doing this, we have to have you paying attention. Um, and asking questions, um, you're paying for the course or you got financial aid or those things. So uh, you should be getting every single detail out of this that you possibly can. So that's part of this. That's why your instructor should also be visible. They should be answering your questions in the chat box. Sometimes it takes some maneuvering like you've noticed with us. Um, so we, of course, just need patience. Um, but that's part of the tech run. Now Larry and I, um, by the fourth one today, she's she, she's we're on it we are on it so it gets better each time that is why we encourage you guys to get on and practice see what the platform is going to be that your teacher is going to use um, if you need to practice with friends practice do a zoom call with a friend do google meets with a friend make sure that everything is working okay for you uh, because when day one happens and i don't doubt, I mean, look at all of you. I don't doubt that on day one, you guys are gonna be able to do this without a problem. There's very few of you who haven't turned on your cameras. So uh, on day one, we want you to be present and active and ready to go. We don't want anybody to have any issues. Mainly because we're not gonna be able to help you when you're in class time. Beforehand, we can help. But when class starts, we can't troubleshoot with you. I think there's some questions. Do you see them, Larry? It's blinking, but I, okay. Uh, so that's where we transition into Blackboard, the beast of Blackboard. So we have, uh, just briefly, I cover it here, and then I will actually show you in Blackboard. So the first is the announcements and the email. Again, there's that student email. So when they go in and make an announcement, they can, uh, your instructors can select an option that sends a direct email to your ICC email. So now you've got two places where you can stay up to date with your instructor. A lot of the times those announcements look like, don't forget your test is due by 9 p.m. tonight and you need to complete it. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're checking your announcements. Your instructor contact information as well as our contact information will be on Blackboard. The discussion board is something that we are having to utilize now because we don't have you in class and we can't have you working together as much because like Larry said, lab is jam packed. and You've got lots of activities. Uh, and the discussion board is another place to interact with each other and to learn from each other, ask questions uh, with your peers and uh, just get comfortable uh, with how to operate the program and what steps are coming next. 
Next up is the, I call it the et cetera items, the course or program info. That's where a lot of the information or forms that Larry has sent will be. Uh, she sends you 200, like three, 200 to 500 emails a semester. Uh, and now she's swapping, so it'll be between two emails. So instead of trying to find it in your emails, most of this information is gonna be on Blackboard. Uh, so it's a quick area to find it. Then you have your course content that includes the PowerPoints, the homework, workbook assignments, and your tests. Then there are lots of supplemental videos. We actually have Joe, Joe is on here, and Joe has been our saving grace for online learning, and so Joe has been the one who has put all of these supplemental videos in a really easy format to use, um, and it's, it's been life-changing for our students and for us to have it all in one space. And then the grades area is, of course, an area that you're going to want to be looking at. The next thing comes into why we ask for a computer or a laptop is because ICC and with the Blackboard arrangement is Blackboard encourages and says they can only guarantee that Blackboard will run efficiently if you're using Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. Um, so we've had issues where tests have closed out or it's timed out or the internet's dropped or some of those things and we will work with you on those but our first question is going to be what what were you utilizing and we just need you to be honest because we want to make sure we figure out what happened because sometimes it is truly a blackboard issue and it has nothing to do with you and so then we need to contact the help desk to fix blackboard so we just want to make sure that we're navigating it appropriately. Oops, I'm going to let go away. Okay, so now I'm going to pull up Blackboard. So this is the general view of Blackboard. Uh, so Joe, um, who teaches much, um, probably almost all, a lot of you, um, his is black and green. So your instructors might look a little different, but this is his. I just put it in bullet points to make it a little easier to see during this. But this is his announcement, and this we uh, copied his, again, we took his stuff, uh, his Blackboard course, and we put it in here. So the this tells you where all of your contact information is right here and how to quickly look at it. So with that, if this is what will be emailed to you if they select to email. Next up is here um, the menu. Sometimes on those op devices or tablets, the menu is hidden. So you want to make sure that when you get in here, it's not only announcements you see, you have to unhide the menu. Then you can go into instructor contacts, which has all of your contact information, your course information, that's the et cetera tab. This is where Joe has his discussion board rules and expectations, also the syllabus, the testing guidelines, abbreviations, so on and so forth. Uh, and then from there, this is where the main content will be. Your rules for your class and your calendar will be here. And then here is what Mod 1 is. Mod 1 covers these four chapters. And once you click in here, this is where your notes are. Your, uh, this is the worksheet for military time. You have your module one discussion board and look at these. So this is one module, one. And look at all of these videos. This is all of the content that is covered in module one. This isn't including the videos and content that's already in the PowerPoint. So it's a lot of information, but this is great, easy info to look at, especially before a test. So just keep that in mind. And then the classic discussion board is right here. And it might be in a different order over here, but it should generally be the same. Once you get into your grade book, however, this is where it can get tricky. Uh, it's, with our program, it is uh, weighted. So that means like tests and the final are all worth more than homework and your workbook. Uh, so when it's inputted in here, it doesn't necessarily always look right. Does anybody know what grade you need to complete onto clinical in our program? And 
Any guess is fine, Joe. A C? Yes. Latasha, was that you? Yes, that's me. Yay! She is correct. A C, a C or 70% oh, oh, oh. there. <laughs> a 70% or better. But our motto is aim for 80. That 95% pass rate, if you get 80s or above in this class, it's almost at 100% that you are going to pass that state exam. So you really want to focus uh, and, and work through this content. Uh, and I promise we will get you through. So that's essentially Blackboard. There'll just be a little couple other odds and ends that are in here. Um, and again, you'll have access next week. So just hop in and move around and check it out. Um, and then if you have questions, you will absolutely be able to just contact your instructors um, and they are happy to help you. Any questions, has anybody had any questions so far? Are you getting them, Larry? Yeah, okay, well you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, I was muted, I'm okay. Sorry. Um, yes, I've just been, I've been giving uh, answers even when there weren't questions. Okay, all right. So, just another area in Blackboard. I'm gonna tell, here we go. So in the top row, yours might look a little different, but there's this area that's called student resources. Um, and it's got some pretty easy direct links for Blackboard help, uh, how to be successful in online classes, the academic support center, which is coming up. All of this stuff is great. But one thing we really wanna make sure everybody knows is that this is, it's stressful. It's a stressful time outside of adding in a program and a class. So, um, if you're overwhelmed, just be honest, be honest with us, be honest with your instructor. Um, and uh, I can guarantee you that we have been there in the state of being overwhelmed or anxious or I don't know how I'm going to get this done. Um, but do know that ICC has free counseling for all students. So you can, it is set up virtually. So ICC is essentially running as a virtual campus, which means that if the services are not open, on campus and they're very limited if they are then they are people are still working from home in those departments so counseling is one of those it's set up entirely virtual so the counselors will meet with you from home uh, and so they um, they you can set it up all online um, and just make sure you utilize those resources keep in mind we still have the food pantry and other things it just takes an extra step or two to get those resources but I, uh, I promise we will get you an answer or get you something if you need it. Um, so from here, we're going to go back to our PowerPoint and we are going to transition. Um, does anybody heard of the Academic Support Center? If you have, either raise your hand or make a reaction or something fun on here. I see ya. See ya. No, Zach says no. Good, oh, that's okay, because now you're gonna know all about it. All right, so it is the tutoring center, um, or academic support, but they offer free tutoring. You can go once, 12 times, 20 times, doesn't matter, it is all free. You can schedule it online. This is another area that is 100% virtual. So the, your counselor or your tutors will meet with you from home, from their home. Um, and there are nurses in the Academic Support Center that are, uh, they are directly related to our program generally. They've either taught with us, they've worked with us, they've, they've contacted us, we send them all kinds of materials. We get them all prepped so that they can help you every single step of the way. Um, and for online scheduling, they have how-tos on there, they have a live chat option, and they even now have specifically blocked out spaces for Blackboard help. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So what I'm gonna do is I, hopefully, am going to show you what it looks like um, from ICC. So this is just the generic ICC website. Here you go, here are some virtual services right there. So icc.edu. Is where you go and so if you go to my ICC this is a drop-down list 
Again, I know it looks different on your phones, but there's Blackboard. You can click right into Blackboard here, student email, e-services, my ICC. This option is actually perfect for your phone. Uh, so it pulls up kind of some app functions, a lot easier to access. And then there's another drop down here. And so there's definitely lots of options, but what I want you to focus on is just this academic support area. So when you click here, it, it puts all of these student services together. It puts your support center, the library, the studio, um, supplemental instruction, student success center. It's all in one area. So you just come here and then you can click which one you want. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to academic support center. So it tells you it's entirely online. Uh, the chat, it's still loading. It looks like it's offline right now, but generally, unless it's not done loading, but generally this will say live chat talk here. So that's an option that is typically available in the daytime. If not, here's an email right here and you can email them. Um, the right here is where you make an appointment. Here is the tutoring schedule and right here is the how to video. So it does take a couple of steps to get set up. I have done it though, so it does not take much. And then once you're set up, it's easy. Use the same password that you use for your email, make it very concise. Then it tells you what does it look like when you do have a tutoring service. Uh, then it goes to a direct link to how to navigate online courses, uh, study resources. So the student center or student support center also offers um, they usually would have workshops, so now they might be more webinars, but they have test taking strategies, how to study, time management, and how to prioritize your time, where to focus. They have all of these little workshops. They don't take very long at all, and general, generally they even have a breakdown that's super short that's very helpful. Uh, so those are also options on here. Uh, so. That is going to be the first question we ask if we notice that maybe anybody is struggling is have you contacted the academic support center? It's going to be the question number one. And then we have some other tips and tricks that we can we can tell you, but this is literally their job and they have all of the trips and tips that you could possibly ever want. Uh, so from here, another option is the library. So I'm gonna just go to the left here and click on the library. I can tell Larry that I'm about to make like a pronunciation error, getting tired. So. Uh, yeah, well, I know, I think it's we're sick of hearing ourselves talk. <laughs> so you guys will all be able to um, make fun of us if uh, we end up making a pronunciation error. We do it frequently <laughs> to each other. So, um, oh, here, here you go. So their chat is still open on the, on the library. So this is what it might look like for you right here, live chat, it's generally a green area. Uh, so this to me, when I'm showing you this, is it might not be your first step, but like right now, and most of you are evening or weekend, so you might have more evening hours, you might need to, um, if tutoring isn't available to help you right now, you could still reach out to the library and see if they could assist you with what you need. They can help with Blackboard, they can help with Google, they can help with all of that. And if they can't necessarily maybe answer your questions, they will get you the information you need or send you to the right space. Uh, so the next part we're gonna go to is I click on About Us. And there's gonna be a direct link in the resources for this too. And if you go to Ask a Librarian, this is my favorite part, is that where you get to chat live, but you can also text the librarians. Um, there are lib guides, again, on the resource sheet. So these are just some sim very simple with pictures, how to's navigate some things. Um, and then you can also email the librarians if you need to. So the main purpose of showing you all of this is to note that you, you are not alone at home. You sometimes are when you're online, but you, you're not necessarily. So you can, you can contact your teachers, but all of us, all of the instructors in the program, are, we're all nurses. We are not tech people. We could chart electronically, well, besides Joe, but that's Joe. Um, he's about the only one. 
we aren't tech people, so we might not be able to assist you on what's working or how or why it's not working, but we can absolutely tell you who to contact. Um, and this is what these services are here for. So you want to use them, want to keep using them. Uh, and, and, and who knows, they might even have extra items that make it 10 times easier than what we've got. If you find those, then tell us too. But Larry, you gonna say something? You unmuted. I was just gonna say, I am the best customer at the help desk. I'm their, I am their favorite customer. They have my picture on the wall, I'm sure, because I call them all the time. So yes, use the services, that's why they're there. Um, yeah, Mike is uh, one of the help desk men and he's always like, oh, hello, Larry. I've heard it many times. Oh, nice to hear from you again, Larry. He does, I'm pretty sure he, <laughs> He has all of her requests memorized. What are you doing today? What did you do wrong today? Uh, okay, so um, so that's another service is uh, the help desk. That's who can reset your password, who might be able to troubleshoot if your browser's not working appropriately and those things. Um, but if it is out of their range, they will be the first to say contact. The Academic Support Center are those things, so it doesn't hurt to try. All right, next, um, it's a little different for evening. So evening, you don't need to worry about this because you go four nights a week and it's every other for um, lecture lab. So you can ignore this part. But the weekend, you have an hour break in between your lecture and lab or lab and lecture depends on I think it's, we changed it lecture then lab. Lab. Yeah. yes um, so there's an hour commute time which is also the hour I need to eat time so I recommend either maybe the night before making uh, your dinner or a snack or lunch or whatever you need to to have it ready or before class um, because I can tell you once you get done and you go to the bathroom and then you get in your car and you drive to campus if you are anywhere on the opposite side of the river, every single bridge, luckily on the weekend, hopefully it won't be too busy, but it was a great time to work on every bridge. So fun, um, trying to get over there. So if, um, just keep that in mind. Um, and if you run into an issue um, or there's been an accident, you're stuck in traffic, you just, you have to contact your instructor. You have to communicate. Um, hopefully not, none of that happens and you are able to be on time every single day but just make sure that you communicate. Um, if, if you live maybe in Metamora, um, yes, Zach, everything's at North. Uh, if you live in Metamora and you're worried that it might be tight, well then just let, let Joe know and, and leave on time, pack your lunch ahead of time and do all of those things. Um, so we're gonna circle back now to lab and being on campus. The main focus is on masks, on hand washing, um, one-way entrances. So uh, what Larry has talked about is that uh, we are very, very lucky to be on campus. There are lots of colleges that chose to remain online. And if any of you uh, were scheduled for summer, you know that we were not able to have a summer program. So we are very grateful that the college decided to let us continue our labs and to have campus access. So with that, uh, with that, we need to be very respectful um, and remember um, that they are watching you, big brother. There are lots of cameras on campus, in the hallways and outside. Um, there aren't any in the labs, but, they are, they are going to be watching to make sure people are entering and exiting appropriately, that you're not congregating in the hallways, all of those things. Um, I know it's repetitive, and you're probably thinking, why on earth are they telling me that I can only, like, okay, we can go to the bathroom one at a time, great. Um, well, it's just we don't want any surprises. We don't want you to get, um, feel like you're blindsided with all of this information the first day that you show up on campus. There could be nothing worse. Um, it's so stressful when you don't know where you're going or you feel like you're not prepared. So we are trying to do our best to prepare you. Um, so once you get there, put your mask on, go into the building, wash your hands, socially distance, 
Uh, and then on your first day of lab, there is going to be a lab contract. And this is nothing major, but it's just how to be um, gracious, how to be respectful, how to be helpful, how to work as a team, um, and how to uh, be mindful of your space and remember that we need to clean things up uh, and because we want to protect your families as well. We don't want you to come in and have somebody else who's not um, being respectful and could possibly uh, trans transmit the virus and now you're ill or we don't want any of that. We want everyone to do what's right and to protect each other. Uh, so that's what the land lab contract comes into play with. And then the handbook assignment also talks about that. It talks about civility, how to be um, nice to each other, respectful, ask questions. We want to try to get you all of this information um, so that you can be as relaxed and confident as possible with moving through the program. Um, and then, and just cleaning, there will be cleaning supplies. Um, these are not like Clorox wipes um, that you, they, there might be some, but we do have medical grade wipes and things. So this is where it's gonna be very important to listen to your instructor on how to clean these things. Wear gloves when you're using them because they are a lot stronger and we don't want you to get um, any issues with rashes or um, any of those things. So just being mindful with the cleaning. And bam, questions. You're muted again, Larry. <laughs> See, this is gonna be, this is gonna be you guys in class too. Let me say bam. Bam. <laughs> okay, so this is the end but it's not the end if you have questions. So what we want now is if anyone has any questions, then you can unmute yourself and ask. Um, are we on camera? Yes, um, yes. You will, um, Nicole, her question is, are we accessing the online lectures from Blackboard? You will actually be accessing them much like you access this orientation, but the link will be found on Blackboard. Okay, so rather than us emailing you saying like click on this link to come to orientation, you will find your link on your Blackboard site to come to lecture. Okay, so does that make sense? Good, good. Um, uh, checking temperatures, we might be doing that at first, um, but I'm not sure that we will be doing that every single day. So we will... Um, we have temperature, obviously have lots of thermometers in the lab, so we have access to all of that. Um, we will be, um, you know, just doing everything we can to keep everyone safe. So whatever the college tells us to do, that's what we'll be doing um, to keep all of you safe. Any other questions? So here's the, here's the scoop. Um, oh, will everyone be attending lab at one time? Everyone in your class, okay? So every class is about a max of 16 students. Um, and um, so the students who are in your class, there's three classes basically represented here. Um, not everyone is here, obviously. But um, so your class will have lab together. You will be assigned a lab partner, so you'll hopefully only be interacting closely with that lab partner but you will be in the lab with everyone from your class. So it could be up to 16 students and two instructors in the lab with you. Uh, Tracy, you should be able to still access it even without the... Um, Joe, I need you, Joe. Yeah, so you don't have to have the Zoom downloaded on I'm trying computer, to think of what the program or uploaded or whatever um, to access. Like you can access a Zoom or a Google Meets from basically anywhere, um, but we want you to access it from your computer because then you will have everything you need to participate in the lecture. So Joe, the question was, um, uh, I don't have access to my Zoom, uh, to Zoom on my laptop. Can I do my lessons on my phone? So, so. The, the 
Zoom meetings, like I, I wouldn't mind if you were on your phone, but it's a small screen. It's not easy to see. Uh, there's content that you're going to need to be able to see and absorb and, and review. And so on a phone, it is not ideal. So I would do my best to get it working, to get the Zoom working on your laptop. Uh, talk to the, the help desk or IT and try to get them to uh, work with you to get that working because that's going to be the absolute best way. Uh, watching it on your phone is going to be second rate. It's just not going to be the experience that we want for you. And it's not going to, you're not going to get everything out of the class that uh, you would otherwise get if you were able to do it on your computer. Um, thank you, Joe. Heather, you get the workbooks uh, from the bookstore or some people are having success on Amazon. Um, and you, um, Heather, Oh, the other Heather, sorry, there are two. Um, if you can print anything out that you want to, um, but there's not anything that's required to have printed, like the lab contract and those things, we will have copies that you just sign while you're there. Um, but uh, if you, uh, like Joe, I had it pulled up, Joe has the notes version of the PowerPoints. Um, so if you would like to print that out, you can, um, or you can just write your notes down like old fashioned in a notebook. Um, so however you would like to do that if um, if anybody has like access services or need um, or if um, you think you would benefit from having paper copies of things um, contact your instructor and then we can kind of navigate that independently yep 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 we want you to have what you need so that's our goal um, if you have questions you can remain on for as long as you have questions, but if you have heard enough and you're ready to move on with your evening, then you are welcome to hang up and leave the meeting. And we are so grateful that all of you took the time to come. This is awesome. Um, so you can hang up at any time, um, but if you have questions still, you can stay on and ask at any time. So I'll be on here for a little bit just to... Um, this last question is for labs, they are not recorded. Um, so you would have to be on campus. Um, I don't know if you mean like if you were on, coming to campus, but if you, you know, couldn't lift anything or something like that, we would need a doctor's note just stating that and then um, probably, it's probably best to handle that outside of here. Yeah. Do I go, do I go to the school or somewhere to pay, how do I pay my, um, class how, how do I do that payment um, you can the enrollment office at, in the in Arbor at the Peoria campus is open um, okay. and so um, I would check the hours online before you go because with COVID everything is different, different. we always think we know what's going on but check and make sure um, but um, yeah so Alexis just email me and I can get with you about like some of that other question um, but yes, the enrollment office is open, so they will always take your money. It will okay. Take your money. They may not be open anywhere else, but the money part, that part's open. Yeah. So, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, is it Sar Sara? Sara? Is that right? I no. That's how, that's how I'm it. pronouncing it in my mind. Do you pronounce it Sarah? Okay. Yes. Oh, in my mind, I've been saying it wrong. Making it more complicated. Darn. Um, If your lab partner doesn't come, you're fine. Well, you'd probably be partners with Jill. Oh, yeah. Or yeah. something. Yeah, we will. We are not going to make you sit out if your lab partner misses a lab. Um, we just want to try to contain things as much as we can. But we know it's not going to be a perfect answer. So, yeah. Um, is it D Danisha? Is I right or wrong? Yeah, Danisha. Yeah. It's yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, yes, you will. Ideally, they have emailed us, um, and we're going to be working that out with your instructors on when you'll be getting your uh, badges, pictures taken. Um, so okay. as of now, yes, that's the plan. To okay. have we're hoping to send all of you over to Arbor to have your picture taken and a clinical badge made for your clinical um, experience. And so... 
Um, that will probably be fairly early in the semester, I think, just because we don't know how things are going to go. Um, and in the spring, we didn't do it early. And then when we got cut off from campus, we didn't have badges for everybody. So we had to really make our own and all that kind of stuff. So we will probably try to get you over there early in the semester to have that done. So okay. Uh, Sarah, there are two weekend classes, so it is either Joe or Lauren. Yes, yes. Both great, and they both know each other, so. Yes, you're going to have a great experience no matter who, because you guys, right now, you guys, you're dialed into, like, some good instructors here, so. Uh, Nicole, you can make payments. You just have to set that up through eServices. Um, yes, and you want to do that before August 24th, because as of August 24th, that's when the first payment is due, um, and so if you haven't had anything set up by then, then you'll start getting, you know, like, uh, dropped, and we have to get you back in, and all that kind of stuff, so, yeah. Uh, if you, oh, Milena, yes, you already took Alzheimer's. If you feel like you remember it, it all and you feel pretty good about it email me and we can drop you from that so yeah um, I don't know about choosing your lab partners I don't know that might just be an alphabetical order type of thing I think that's gonna yeah. be the instructors and yeah. um, and so probably each instructor will have their own method for he might maybe Joe will just close close his eyes and point <laughs> Who knows? Place these tongue depressors and pull your name out of a hat. So he might do that, but I don't know. Maybe it's whoever gets ate it right or wrong that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, any other questions? Uh, trying to see if we've answered all of them. If not, you are free to go. Be gone, young people. <laughs> Wait, I have a question. <laughs> hey. Yes, Latasha. Okay, so for the Blackboard, is my username on the same as my e um, my e service? It's going to be LF, three numbers and sometimes a letter, whatever that is on the first part of your email address, that's your username. Okay. Okay. So it's always your first initial, your last initial, three numbers and sometimes a letter. Um, okay. So like Jessica, what and our JL nine seven two A or something like it's always like some weird thing. Um, okay, is it the password, the funny password that they send us. Um, if it's the first time you've ever logged on, okay. ever, then it will be capital I, capital C, capital C, and the last five of your SOCH. If you have okay. logged on before and changed your password, then it will be whatever you changed it to. If you have forgotten, you have to call the help desk. Oh, okay. I just got in. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Now you'll never want to be there again. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Any burning uh, questions? Uh, Denisha, no. 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 Okay. No. Well, then hang up. I'm going to hang up. Oh, no. She's at, she asked about planned vacations. We do oh. not want any planned vacations on your time in class. <laughs> um, okay. No, because yeah. general, it's not a guarantee that the other classes will be covering the exact same content that you miss. Right. It's, and it's with, really difficult to do. So even it, if it was just like one week, like if it's already like a scheduled plan and you miss one weekend. I mean, can you make that okay. up? I would say that what I always recommend for students is um, to talk it over with your instructor and find out, like, it depends, a lot depends on when it is and what it is. Okay. okay. And so um, it's not out of the question, but that means missing two days if you miss a weekend. And that's a okay. lot of class. That would mean you'd have to have perfect attendance other than that, or you would have too many absences. No tardies, okay. no nothing. So, yeah. So another thing that's an option now is that it could be that you could, if you had internet access wherever you were going, maybe you would just miss labs for that weekend. And that right. would be quite as devastating. You could still be in on the lectures. Okay. Maybe you just would need to make up labs, which would be a little bit easier. Um, okay. But 
so it's not a total no, but it's it's really difficult if you miss two whole days. Okay. Especially, um, it depends on where you travel to because we have to follow travel restrictions. And if um, some people have to self quarantine when you get back for fourteen days. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and then if um, if you do end up missing those labs, and if we get canceled or uh, something happens, then you're already extra behind. So. Okay. It, we don't want anybody to be in that boat at all. Okay. We don't want anybody to be in that position. Okay. Uh, no, Brittany, they are not listed yet. I don't know. Brittany, no, they will not be. Um, typically, uh, classes aren't available until the first day. We will have opened them up early next week. Okay. Heather, you would have to email Larry. Um, Heather, email me and I will let you know um, what I have available, okay? And we'll work it out. Under the bookstore, um, I'm looking for the workbook right now. Which department would we be under? The health one? Yes. Health careers. Okay. Health, H-L-T-H, and it's 112. Cool. All right. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. yes. Do they have it? If it you give listed. me like 30 seconds, I can find out. Okay. It was listed earlier for me. Okay, good. Good. We're hoping. This is a new book for us, so we're hoping. It wants me to select a section. I see like a uh, bunch of names. S Weatherford, A Punk, any of them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, I don't think it matters. So we can get it from the ICC bookstore, Amazon, or Chegg, I'm guessing, too? Yeah, any, any place that sells it, as long as you get okay. the red edition and you get the textbook and the workbook. Okay, and the ICC patches are worn on the arm, on the front of the scrub? The, or? Left, the left sleeve, um, okay. right here, yep. Okay, and we need a gate belt, too, right? shot at some point, yeah. <laughs> and we need a gate belt as well? Yes. yes. Okay. And I'll be sending a supply list out to all you guys, so you'll have everything. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, any other questions? I'm out. All right. Do they have it, Zach? Heather, they, you yeah, yeah, they email. do have it. There. Okay, sweet. They have both of them. It comes out to just under $100. It's 9103 for both the textbooks. Sweet. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Well, you guys have been a joy. It was really nice seeing all your faces after I've been emailing you forever. So, okay. I, we will see you later. I'm going to hang up. Bye.